So I started my career as an artist about 30 years ago, both as a screenwriter and uh, an entrepreneur, and sometimes schizophrenically trying to do both at the same time, which is a little tricky because you're busy trying to execute something on one hand and you give yourself total freedom, and on the other hand, you're busy watching the dollars flow out the door and saying, oh my God, I can't be spending that much money, I've got to stop. And that became uh, sort of a mantra and a piece of my life. What ensued was after doing that for about 30 years and making films for other people and messages for other people, uh, I felt myself had a little bit of a crossroads and I realized that the best storytelling that I did and the best storytelling that other people did all evolved out of not only moving people but educating them and by using dynamic visuals to do it. And so a while back, I met a fellow named David Belinsky who created these images who is arguably the best animator of his kind, who does great scientific animation and has educated people at Harvard with molecular biology texts and things of this sort. And what they found at Harvard was really fascinating. They found that at Harvard, when people looked at these films, they scored 40% higher on all their exams. It was amazing. Just looking at the movie made a 40 percentile difference. So we began to believe that these things were really powerful, far more powerful than text. And we began to think that it was time for a big revolution in how things were being done, specifically books, specifically education. And we came to the conclusion that with the democratization of the internet and tablets specifically, that finally there was a medium extant that would enable people almost throughout the world, as price comes down, to have access to basic information and basic learning in a way that would be highly personalized, controlled by the user, and at the same time, um, beautiful, elegant, simple, and powerful. And we felt that we could do that in a way that would be usable globally, in the sense that the same visuals would be able to be used and reconfigured for people speaking different languages in different places. So I met David for the first time at the TED conference with my wife, Jacqueline, and then we ran into each other again at uh, Singularity University uh, in Mountain View, California. And at Singularity University, their mantra is teaching people how to use exponential technology to change the world. And we began to see that we could change the lives of a billion people, which is their goal, by going forth and saying, maybe we could just make a little bit of a difference in education. Maybe we could make a difference in the way we teach science. And maybe we could find a way to teach basic biological science in such a way. And as we began to talk about it, we got excited about forming our company, which is Immersion Learning, and we started thinking that we could teach people immersively and in their own way. And we kept talking about it, but we couldn't really figure out what to do. And so I was lucky enough to sit down with a friend of mine, a guy named Simon Waring, who, Main Waring, who is arguably a terrific author and has written a book called We First. I know there are lots of we's out there before people, we this, we this, and we that. But in truth, We First is sort of a rethink of capitalism today. And it's about integrating some social responsibility with your actions. And so Simon and I were talking about this, and he was saying, yeah, you want to do that, that's great, blah, blah, blah. It's wonderful, it's terrific, it's fabulous. But ultimately, what's the purpose of your company going to be? Now, in 30 years of business, no one had ever asked me what the purpose of my company was going to be. And I had a feeling that the answer wasn't make a lot of money. <laughs> I had a feeling that the answer was something entirely different. And it set me to thinking about two things. One, this idea that had been impregnated in my brain and was rattling around. You could change the lives of a billion people. Wow, maybe you could change the lives of a billion people. There were a billion students in just South Asia, Pakistan, China, and Indonesia, not even including the US, UK, EU, anyone else, who all are of school age, all K through 12, all of whom don't have easy access to education. And so we started saying, gee, maybe we could do this, a billion people, what an interesting idea. And then purpose, what's the purpose of the company going to be? And this started rattling around in my brain and it was driving me crazy. And then I started to decide that it was fair and appropriate to torture David too. So I started talking to David about it and he started rattling around. And ultimately we said, gee, the purpose of our company should be to educate every kid on the planet, every kid on the planet, about basic human science and basic biological science. Because in knowing ourselves, in knowing biology, we know ourselves and we're given reasoning tools and all kinds of other tools that apply across lots of other disciplines. So to that end, we decided that we would begin to embark on this kind of mission. And we finally said, this is gonna be our purpose. And then we said, we're gonna to have to figure out a way to make this affordable. And then we thought, gee, the tablet is continuing to expand and expand and expand, and we'll do it. 
And so we started to do it. And with a little bit of your permission, I'd like to show you one of the things we're working on right now, which is this little kid floating in space, sort of. And if you look at the next page that comes up on the screen, you'll see that this looks like a generic textbook. There are pictures, there are illustrations, there's text, and so forth. But when you come here to the next page, where our happy kid is floating again, and tap on him, if I can do this properly today, if he works today. <laughs> He's not working. The umbilical cord and the blood left in it at birth contain a broad diversity of pristine newborn stem cells that have demonstrated the ability to help other tissues and organs heal themselves after injury or disease. While researchers have yet to identify every type of newborn stem cell, they have isolated specific stem cells that are the building blocks for other cells and organ tissue throughout the body. Hematopoietic stem cells found in cord blood have been used for 20 years to help regenerate the body's blood and immune system. Mesenchymal stem cells found primarily in the umbilical cord tissue itself have the ability to help form bone or connective tissues like cartilage and ligaments. Stem cells from the umbilical cord and cord blood have distinct benefits compared to adult stem cells from bone marrow. They're younger, have greater ability to multiply, and have had minimal exposure to environmental factors like viruses or chemicals that can interfere with cell structure and function. But what remains a question is how newborn stem cells work together to help the body heal. So that's a little example of what can happen. And while that's happening, any student learner can stop this and start it at any point in the film. They can expand it to fill the screen. And what it enables them to do is learn at extreme velocity and retain in an extraordinary way. And they can go back and refer to text as well. And so there's never a barrier. What it also does is enable students who are coming to schools today almost all over the world. And the teacher's role, and I think Khan Academy, who has presented Ted in the past, have proven this uh, without doubt, that teachers are spending 80% to 90% of their time uh, presenting data to children, and the other 10% actually teaching children about the data or trying to get them to understand the data or how to deploy the data or in some other way integrate it into their lives. We feel that if we can make these kinds of tools available to young people and to professionals as well in their later careers, that what we're able to do then is create stuff where they come prepared in advance and so that that full hour that they have with the teacher is not 40 minutes or 50 minutes of didactic presentation, but actually collegial working and tutoring in the way that I think education is meant to be. So if we go along a little further, we decided that maybe we needed some additional haptic kickback here because one of the other things that seems to be happening is that when you touch stuff, uh, you get a little shot of dopamine, which is kind of addictive. And that's why I think Angry Birds has been such a huge success. And we decided that you could rotate things in space and enable people to learn how to see things in space just with touch, which is powerful, and then go on and realize that a page could be any length any length at all, it's infinite, because you're not bound by paper, which we believe is ultimately going to be a dead medium in terms of doing anything except art projects and books of consequence like cookbooks. And so here, when we're dealing with stem cells specifically, which were spoken about by Alan briefly earlier, you can see that Many this is about traumatic brain injury. Traumatic brain injury occur because pressure caused you can see as the how brain it swells within its confined space destroys neural tissue. Researchers are evaluating the use of newborn stem cells from cord blood to treat cerebral palsy, stroke, anoxia, and traumatic brain injury. So I sure wish I'd had this when I was going to school. And then additionally, what we're able to do now is bring up images like this. And although on this particular version of this beta, we're not able to do it, what we have software that we're able to do is actually take your finger, touch that device, and touch that lung or that other organ, and then go inside one more time and get inside the structure and go deeper into the structure and deeper into the structure about five times for each little area on the screen, because that's about the depth that the software allows us to activate those pixels before we end. And then last but not least, we've got a little film to show you about uh, the very beginning of a project that we're doing that regards to the animal cell. And this is 
literally the beginning of uh, something that's early. So what you'll see is that you can take the cell and you can turn it around any way you want. With a touch of a finger, you can bisect it and look inside of it in another view. You can then come and look at what's inside, find out more information about what's inside, come back and look at this apparatus, for example, find out what it actually looks like, rotate it in space and learn from it. And then last but not least, take a look a little deeper still and take a look at the mitochondria and take a look at its structure and then decide that you want to know what's going on inside of it chemically. And now you can actually learn that too. And so you get to see these cute couple dancing together um, and making life happen before your very eyes inside the cell. And we, as everybody knows, have billions of these guys going on. So that's what we're trying to do. It's what we're hoping to continue doing. It's early days for us in terms of doing this. But ultimately, what we're hoping to accomplish is to reach everyone. We hope you'll all help us and join our crusade. And thank you for your time here today.